Hey there friends, it's Kodiak here. Welcome back to Legacy Gaming and welcome to Wonderlands. Today, I wanted to talk about the end game, a huge part of any Gearbox game, and in this case, the start of your loot hunting adventure. Tiny Tina's Wonderlands is a smaller game than Borderlands 3, so let's just keep that in mind as we start to unpack the end game systems. I think it's always important to have perspective, because if you're anticipating the exact same systems as the last Borderlands game, you're gonna be disappointed, plain and simple. Based on what I've experienced in my 40 plus hours with the game ahead of launch, my guess is that the Wonderlands team really took a hard look at the end game loop and said, how do we make the most out of something that's overall a smaller package? The answer is the Chaos Chamber. Once you beat the main story, you'll have access to this entire system, and to summarize it quickly, it's a roguelike built right into Wonderlands. The gist is more or less the same every time. You'll run through three arena-style encounters, fighting off waves of enemies, then on the fourth map you'll fight an obelisk encounter. These mirror the obelisk found in the main game where you're still fighting off waves of enemies, but it culminates in a boss fight. A quick note, this round or any obelisk challenge doesn't end until the mini-boss is dead, so focus your fire there and try and take them out of the picture as soon as possible. After the fourth room, you'll have three more standard rooms to complete, and then, after all that's done, you'll end with a boss fight. Now, depending on what type of run you've selected at the start, your experience may vary slightly. A normal run is randomized. That means each room and the end boss is always going to be different. Sometimes you'll end up fighting one of the harder bosses, other times one of the easier bosses. It's all a roll of the dice. A featured run, according to the tooltip, is a locally sourced artisanal run handmade for you. Now, how does this vary from a normal run? Well, it really doesn't, but let's just say this. The last encounter is consistent every time. There's no randomness there. And in an attempt to not spoil anything, I won't reveal what that is. There's also an extended run, which is normal mode, but longer. That length is actually really important because as you'll find out, the longer the run, the more opportunity for awesome loot. Finally, there is a chaos trial run, which is basically the end game progression mode. By completing your first chaos trial, you'll unlock chaos mode, which deserves its own explanation. Chaos mode essentially buffs the world around you, making everything more challenging. Each chaos level changes the enemy's overall HP, damage, XP, gold, moon orbs, and loot luck. So obviously, the higher the chaos level, the easier it is to get the best loot. The only way to advance your chaos level is by completing the hardest difficulty chaos trial, so you see, the systems are tied together. Once you turn chaos mode on, it's active across the entire world, so whether or not you're going to farm some mobs in a specific zone, or going to farm the chaos chamber, Chaos Mode is active. This is really the catalyst to everything you do in the Wonderlands Endgame, and I want to make sure that's clear, because the game really doesn't do a great job pointing you towards the Chaos Trial game mode. In fact, my curiosity is the only reason why I decided to try one at all. Once I beat it, a brand new menu system popped up, and I was like, whoa, that's important. Now, you're either going to love or hate the Chaos Chamber. I think at this point, you know whether or not you like a roguelike system, but for those of you that have never experienced it, let me break it all down. At the start of each round, you enter with just your base level gear. As I said, you fight through various arena-style encounters, but each room is slightly different. The main goal is to kill all of the enemies. That will complete the room, but there are also secondary objectives that will net you an additional reward. There are a few variations here, such as standing in a specific spot while killing enemies, protecting a statue, destroying a statue, or feeding a floating fire moat. Silly things that require some of your concentration. The real reason you want to try and complete these are those additional rewards, which are small reward dice that explode in a shower of crystals. Crystals are the main currency within the Chaos Chamber, and the more the better, because at the end of your run, you'll have the chance to turn them in for a specific item type of your choosing. Within each level are also buffs that you can choose to purchase. These will cost an increasing amount of crystals every time, but will grant you passive bonuses like increased bullet damage, increased status damage, and much more. The more buffs you have, the stronger you are, but the less crystals you'll take to the end game. Once you clear a room, you'll also have to make a choice, what portal to enter next. Each portal will have a different icon on it, indicating the reward at the end for completing that level. Queen Butt Stallion levels award you with a small buff to your skills, the Dragon Lord portals offer you two different affixes that change the nature of the encounters, but reward you with more crystals. The Dragon Chest portal rewards you with an additional loot dice filled with some crystals, and the Chest portal offers you an additional loot dice filled with some items. Before we get there, I also want to point out that in most levels there is a special crystal called a Quartz. By killing this, you'll spawn an elite enemy that, when killed, will drop some great loot and additional crystals, so explore each map to the fullest. I also want to mention these secret runes that spawn randomly after an encounter has been complete. There are three in total, and I'm not going to spoil the surprise in this video. You'll just have to keep an eye on the channel because this is one of those things you absolutely don't want to miss. When all is said and done, and you've completed your Chaos Chamber run, boss and everything, 
you'll end up in the Loot Cave. This is a magical place that not only rewards you with a chest, often containing a legendary item, but the chance to spend your crystals on the item type that you desire. You can spend up to 500 crystals at any one statue at a time, and of course, the more you spend, the better the loot that you get. You can hit a statue multiple times, and you can spend less than 500 if you don't have enough to fully commit, and you'll get loot representative of how many crystals you invested. It might sound complicated in theory, but really, you just pick the statue of the item type that you're hunting down, spend the crystals, and profit. Depending on the type of run that you choose, the Chaos Chamber can take anywhere from 15 to 40 minutes. That's going to vary depending on your gear and difficulty, but it's clear that's the goal. It's a short bit of endgame content that supplements the standard Borderlands-style farming, and like I said in the intro, you're either going to love it or hate it. Luckily, if that's not your cup of tea, you can farm named enemies the traditional way, and unlike in the preview build we had access to, the save-quit reload method of farming is still very much a thing in Wonderlands. I know that was a big concern for a lot of folks leading up to launch, and I'm happy to say it's still very possible. If you're looking for a specific item, there are tons of named enemies across the Wonderlands with loot galore, so if the gauntlet stylings of the Chaos Chamber aren't your thing, there are other options. If it doesn't seem like there's a lot of endgame content, you'd be right, but again, keep in mind that this is a smaller game, at least at launch. The Gearbox team has already revealed their Season Pass content, the first part launching on April 21st. This will include something called the Mirrors of Mystery, which absolutely seem like another endgame system. We know Gearbox does this with all of their releases, injecting more content into the mix at a relatively consistent basis post-launch, and the same is going to be true for Wonderlands. Hopefully now you have a better understanding of how the endgame gameplay systems work in Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. With a firm grasp of this concept, I have no doubt you'll be on your way to claiming all the shiny loot the Wonderlands has to offer. As always, if you appreciate guides that get straight to the point and don't waste your time, we'd love your support. Hit that thumbs up and consider subscribing so you never miss a new video. You can also join us on Discord. We have a section dedicated just for Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, and we'd love to have you join our community of over 20,000 members. Finally, if you like everything we're doing here on the channel and you want to support us even more, you can do so by becoming a member. For just a few bucks, you're helping Livid and I achieve our dreams of becoming full-time content creators. Check out the join button below to learn more. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching, and play on.